a topic on the retrofixation of iris claws. It is one of the important lens and easy to manipulate, especially in the when there is no uh, capsular support or other option is not available. It is one of the easiest procedure. It can be used in subluxated cataract and IOL once you remove the IOL, apart from gruel IOL and scleral fixated IOL. So it is the advancement in technique and IOLs. Good visual outcome is achieved in subluxated cataract and IOL. There are the multiple causes of the subluxation and dislocated IOLs. Congenital, traumatic, metabolic, consecutive. So decision regarding the surgical intervention as per the journular dissensation. So there is a uh, nomogram which you can do whether it is three o'clock, five o'clock, five to seven or more than. And according to you can plan CTR and everything. So my topic is only the uh, is iris claw. So I am going to cover only on that retrofixation of iris claw. It is one of the good lens designed by John Burst and then modified by Dr. Dalji Singh which I am using since last 30 years. And it is one of the good option in extreme subluxation and compromised PC. Why uh, iris claw? Uh, easy to implant once you learn, less chances of secondary glaucoma, rate of dislocation is less, less endothelium, less loss. There are the multiple study on this. Endothelial cell loss was comparable to scleral fixated IOL and better than interchamber IOL. And it is a good option in eye with inadequate posterior capsular support. What are the contraindications? Recurrent iritis because it is clawed to the iris, rubella cataract, severe iris atrophy. When there is no iris support, still we can use it if there is some part of the iris available. Uncontrolled chronic glaucoma, corneal dystrophy or degeneration. How you see that inclination? Heptic attached to the mid periphery, which is probably immobile iris. Normal vasculature and nerve supply will not interfere. Allow pupil unrestricted dilatation and constriction. It will be slightly elliptical. And there is a study with the fluorescein angiography that show there is a no leakage of the iris vessel at the site of enclavation. It is how you see the enclavation in the when it is probed antechamber and it is a dent when it is a posterior placement, retrofixation. So we it is the animation how to you can it is simple it's a two side port incision 180 degree apart main incision it will be 4.5 to 5 mm length inject viscoelastic or tricot and do the good anterior vitrectomy then put the pilocarpy so to the constrict the pupil Then inject viscoelastic in the antechamber. Then this is the claw lens. You can see there is a two claw 180 degree apart. Put directly from 90 degree and then rotate it horizontally with the two hooks. Once you place it the proper direction with the lens holding operation on that side of the claw, the important step is you have to hold firmly at this point here so that that inclination is done completely. Again, re-inject the viscoelastic. There might be some leakage of the visco. Hold at the other side and firmly hold the lens so that it doesn't tilt. And you can see that how simple it is. So we move to the formula calculated. The best is the SRKT or Barrett's. And antechamber, if you do, the, it is 115. And if it is on the pastry placement, because it is far away from the cornea, 116.5. So how you can implant different situation? It is a severe subluxated cataract. There is no option. Either you have scleral fixated or glue. Once you have completed the, I'm just fast forwarding, completed the lensectomy, put the pilocarpy, the pupil is round, side port, 
the lens is placed horizontally and holding from from that side of the lens that inclination is there you can see that how simple the process is it will hardly take fraction of second to enclave that lens in place and it is you can do the iridectomy as you wish and that lens is in the place another it is a case of dislocated nucleus doing surgery when removed <laughs> it, i will skip that once because it is a complicated situation again doing scleral fixated or glue yeah. or it is more traumatic you can see that in cases of dislocated once you manage with the phaco fragmentation how simple it is to put that intraocular lens in the place the 4.5 so it is slightly need a pressure to go in and that inclination is quite only thing you have to keep other haptic uh, other part of the haptic anterior to ids before inclination because it may slip into the posterior chamber and simple there is a case of subluxated iol iol implanted because of the junular dystrophy the whole intraocular lens and back was dislocated so there is no option either you have to use iris glass glue diol remove this in toto do the entire good entire vitrectomy as i mentioned in the animation and once you are done put the pilocarpine viscoelastic so your complicated process is quite made quite simple by putting the iris claw lenses this is a hook you can use a small thin lens hook also lens holding force it the only important point that you have to hold this lens firmly while inclination many time it is feared that uh, this may lens dislocate because of the iris trophy it is very rare but advantage of that whenever it dislocate it is always there is a one site it inclinate and you can easily reinclinate there is a dislocated from that left side we have simply brought back lens into the upper part entry chamber and again reinclinate it in the slim same place so inclination is done washing is simple remove the viscoelastic so in short iris claw implantation is easy to implant less lesser complication rate and it give the good visual rate and especially in severe junular dialysis stay safe and healthy thank you thank you very much